Shanta Devarajan is a professor of the practice of international development at Georgetown University, but this is key. He is also a member of Sri Lanka's presidential advisory group on debt sustainability. And I thank you for joining us now. I mean, as part of this advisory group, you already had a heck of a job on your hands trying to convince the IMF and others that Sri Lanka could come out of this, could restructure its debt. Now, where are we now? You just heard the opposition leader there, I hope, in that report. The opposition leader says, look, no one's in charge of Sri Lanka now. H how do you get this back on the rails? Well, we've been negotiating with the IMF and with our creditors for the last uh, three months now, since April, uh, for a program of adjustment that would then lead to an IMF program that could bring in much needed foreign exchange uh, into the country. And those discussions are continuing because they're at the technical level at this point. Um, and so the central bank governor and the secretary of the treasury are negotiating with the IMF staff uh, as, as we speak. Um, the, the fact that there's no leader as, as such at the moment is neither here nor there because these technical discussions can go on what is important is that in about three months' time, when we hope this, this program will be approved by the IMF board, that's when you need a leader to be able to sign off on the program. And so I think the, the main point is that they should come to some agreement over the next day or two as to who is the president or the act, interim president of Sri Lanka, who will then appoint a prime minister and, importantly, a finance minister. But I should say that... Uh, Regardless of who is in charge three months from now, I'm quite confident that they will approve of the program, even though it was negotiated by a different government, because we've been in co consultation with the leaders of the opposition, including Sajid Premadasa, whom you interviewed just now, uh, informing them about the program and getting their feedback. And the feedback we've gotten is that they're, mo they're basically on board with the kinds of policy reforms that we are proposing in the program. So I'm reasonably confident that whoever is in charge will approve of the program, even if they weren't the ones uh, who actually negotiated it. And I understand that. And, and from a technical perspective, perhaps people should be relieved. Having said that, that is still, as you said, a few months in the making. People are in dire need right now, whether it's for fuel or cooking oil, basic medicine. You know, you know as well as I do the allegation against this president and his family uh, about the endemic corruption and, and the kinds of abuses in office that they've been accused of. I mean, are you certain that whether or not you'd get buy-in from the opposition leader or not, that the people of Sri Lanka have the patience to really endure this? Because some of these financial conditions do come with austerity. And guess what? They come back with putting income taxes back in place as well. Ah, but you see, this is different from your typical IMF-style austerity program because the Sri Lankans are going through austerity right now, before the program. That right now there are shortages of food and fuel and pharmaceuticals. There's been a, a zero foreign exchange reserves, essentially. So th they are actually experiencing what normally people experience when you introduce an IMF program. The difference is that when you have the IMF program, that will relieve some of these foreign exchange uh, uh, foreign exchange constraints. Right, so but, they, what demands, but, what, but what demands can be made of reform in, in, in the country? I mean, right now we still have someone who's closely affiliated with the past president basically insisting that the military now has to take over and, and restore law and order. Well, uh, but I, I mean, I, I can only make uh, answer the question about what demands on economic policy. And those po uh, policies are essentially the reverse of the policies that got Sri Lanka into trouble. As you said in your, in your introduction, the tax cuts of November 2019 were, was what led to Sri Lanka being excluded from capital markets and having to use reserves to, to, to borrow. So you have to restore those tax cuts. You have to restore taxes if Sri Lanka is to have a credible macroeconomic program. Likewise, Sri Lanka has a whole series of subsidies that are essentially subsidizing the rich. They're going to the rich, but they're draining the coffers of the, uh, of the, of the uh, treasury. Uh, we have to cut those subsidies and protect the poor by expanding the cash transfers that are targeted to the poor. So those are the elements of the program. This is not 
a, a draconian program at all. Indeed, it is a program that will relieve the foreign exchange constraints. I, I know, and I'm just thinking that it per, perhaps if for people that are on the streets right now, they would have a hard time thinking that in, in two or three months uh, that this will be a panacea and improve things. And, and I know you're yeah. not calling it that. Listen, it's, a, it's important to get your perspective in here, and you've given us a lot of technical detail about what is underway now, which is important. Uh, and I appreciate you coming on, and I hope to have you on in the weeks to come. Thanks so much. Appreciate it.